Hey folks, George Leoniak, New Spirituality. I'm back with another video and today I think this is a pretty important video. We're going to look at Metatron's Cube, also known as the Fruit of Life. And if you've been around sacred geometry for a little bit, and I'm assuming many of you probably have if you're checking out this video, you'll often hear people say that the Fruit of Life or Metatron's cube contains all five platonic solids. And I wanna clear that up today and show you that that's really not the case and introduce um, another method that is a little more accurate and uh, one method that is completely accurate at the end of the video, um, but it will be from a different view. So I think this is pretty important because as more people get engaged with sacred geometry or at least been seeing the imagery um, it's becoming more and more popularized the uh, the, the teachings of the past that have been presented um, continue to show or produce this um, you know misinformation around the metatron's cube and that it contains all five platonic solids so as we get more engaged with this, hopefully we'll clear this up so we can move forward and really understand what it is that it contains. So um, let's, uh, I'll share the screen here like I normally do and have a short presentation set up um, to just describe Metatron's cube. And you know, this isn't gonna be kind of a how to draw video. It's going to be a little bit more on the uh, details, so I have some drawings um, details later on. But so here is, uh, you know, traditionally what you see, you could see this, you know, type in Fruit of Life on a regular search or Metatron's Cube, and you'll see the Metatron Cube design with the 13 circles with the interconnected lines which, you know, does produce a cube, a smaller cube within a larger cube. And, you know, the five platonic solids, uh, which it only really contains these three accurately, are the uh, tetrahedron here, mostly uh, drawn as the double star tetrahedron. The octahedron is also one that is an accurate representation. And the hexahedron cube. There are other forms in there, but we're just gonna stick with the platonic solids. So yeah, it, it, it can produce these forms, you know, infinitely at multiple scales nested inside of one another easily as you go on and on, um, octahedrons, tetrahedrons, and cubes. And of course the tetrahedron is part of the cube. So really it's, you know, the hexahedron, the octahedrons um, are, and tetrahedron are all contained in there. So the icosahedron, this is typically how it's drawn. Um, and the dodecahedron, uh, and I'll point out what's up with the icosahedron in the next slide and why that's not an accurate rendition. Let's just zoom in on this uh, dodecahedron. Actually, you know what, we'll be able to do that on the next slide, I've got a bigger image. So anyway, here's the dodecahedron. It's contained it's smaller in the uh, area here. Its points are not all contained within the circle. But anyway, more on that in the next slide because I have a bigger version of it right here. So here's the thing with the uh, incorrect octahedron. Now the, the primary thing is, is that essentially the drawing is just two um, uh, triangles inside, one, one smaller one inside the larger one. And that doesn't really accurately bow out the sides. This is how the icosahedron should look. It shouldn't be a straight line across this base here. It should kind of inflate out at the bottom at these nodes here um, because it has some dimensionality. Essentially what this icosahedron drawing is, is, is it essentially it's an octahedron because um, if I take that triangle out and, you know, flip the, oct the octahedron, you know, flip the, the drawing around, this one that I had here, if we flip it around, this will just fit right over top of that. And of course, the octahedron, that's a flat triangular surface, so that works. 
And if you just put this other triangle uh, inside of it, essentially that's just a triangle on an, icos uh, on an octahedron face. So, you know, that's what you're looking at here. It's totally incorrect. Um, the measurements, now these are scaled to the same picture. Uh, we're gonna base our edges here on the icosahedron on a one inch edge length and it's gonna have a relationship to the phi ratio soon because the icosahedron and the dodecahedron are intimately linked to the phi ratio. And what this is showing is that Metatron's cube isn't really having um, phi ratio show up in, a, in the drawing here. It's, um, it, it's not gonna draw a, an icosahedron or dodecahedron as we've been shown. So it's gonna also not have that phi relationship of one to 1.618 or one to 0.618, you know, and get the phi relationship. So anyway, this is a one inch edge and uh, this edge of this small triangle, which is the same as this, is a 0 0.8 inch. So I scaled those to show that, you know, we're, we're not gonna be anywhere close to a proper icosahedron here. Now we'll zoom in here on this one because I was explaining this is the, uh, tr the way that the, the decahedron has been popularized and drawn for quite a while now. Um, a few authors in their books and even current authors and current online programs and all of it, they continue to teach this dodecahedron and icosahedron view, although I do see at least the icosahedron some more accurate drawings of it in some um, books, recent books. Um, and of course, uh, Wikipedia and other researchers who have this, all their drawings are accurate to how they look um, as the actual forms from this view. But sacred geometers have tried to find the dodecahedron in here. And one way that was designed first popularized in the uh, ancient secret of the flower of life by Trinavalo Melchizedek, you know, he, you know, used the lines of Metatron's cube, you know, connecting all these um, centers of the circles and then drew a line connecting this point and then used this red line to connect this inner space here between this and that gave all five edges of you know a pentagonal face that's on a slant. Now the problem with that is yeah, it looks good, um, but I decided to do some actual measurements on here because the geometry can't be divorced from the mathematics associated with it. So we have to always test this out because you can draw anything and it could look very, very close. I mean, we're talking, you know, tenths of a decimal point and it's not actually accurate. But for, in this case, it is really not accurate at all because what we wanna try and do with the dodecahedron is if this length here is one inch across the face of the, pen, the pentagonal face. So if we did the star in here, if that's one inch from here to here, that back edge should be 0 0.618. So on your, pentagram face here, if this is one inch from here to here, then this should be 0 0.618. So what we've drawn here, when I overlay this, just so you see I'm not making all this up, is that the, uh, the here's the one inch, you know, as I scale these drawings to the appropriate sizes, and here's the, measurement that we take along the back edge from where it's drawn, we're not going to produce a phi ratio at all with that. And what the drawing should look like, you know, is if I overlay it on this, well, I'll just, I'll just give you an idea of the uh, amount of inaccuracy that's in the drawing is the, the sides, and it's not laid up perfectly, but you could see that the, it, it's not going to mirror the actual size of the, the decahedron that we would want to see in this drawing as being accurate. All the proportions are off. So, you know, that proposed a, a, ch a problem to me, a challenge, you know, to wonder what's up with that when I discovered the, that that was really 
quite off like that because it's so popularized in our sacred geometry. And we're dealing with um, sacred geometry, sacred mathematics. And, and sacred is, um, so, you know, it comes from a root word of sacral. This is in Robert Lawler's book uh, of sacred geometry. I really love this definition having to do with the sacrum, the sacrum bone, these fused bones that are, are fixed bones, the sacrum. And that these mathematical principles, these geometric laws that um, are within the universe, you, you should expect sacred geometry to work anywhere in the universe with the mathematics and geometry. And if we're going to present diagrams that, you know, have a history um, going back to uh, Fibonacci. I'm, now I came across a source a while ago online that said Fibonacci, uh, you know, the one who gave us the Fibonacci sequence is the one who designed this and called it Metatron's cube. I only heard that from one source. So I'm not really sure if that's an accurate uh, description of that. But, you know, it's, it's gone back, you know, at least hundreds of years, maybe if not thousands. But, you know, we keep getting closer to more accurate ways. And we can modify and work with this. If we realize that this is not a correct dodecahedron, well, let's try to make a, a better one and go from there. So I, I worked on, tr on trying to do that here. And, you know, I devised a, a new way of doing this. Now this is um, can also slightly be ac inaccurate because I, I guess I really don't believe after doing this, and I'd like to know otherwise, if the dodecahedron can actually be drawn in the flower of life, uh, fruit of life, pattern at all. I don't believe the vertices are going to line up in a way that you'll find the segments to draw it um, completely accurately. But anyway, I've, I've scaled the drawings here and I'll just show you what I did. I'll zoom in on these. Um, you know, as one way to try and do a correction code to this uh, dodecahedron and icosahedron. The icosahedron is going to work out but what I did was, you know, I wanted to make sure that this edge here is one inch and that will show up on the icosahedron. So in order to do that, you know, I scaled all the circles within this fruit of life design to 0 0.461 inches. And then, um, you know, that gave me this uh, vesica, each vesica Pisces in the, is gonna be 0.4. So when we add all those up going across, that's going to give us a two inch length here. And then that would provide this one inch edge length. Now, when, when I did that though, that means that back edge of the dodecahedron and I, for a while, you know, until this morning, as I decided to really work on this again, you know, thought it was pretty close to 1.618, just eyeballing it. But then I refined the mathematics and got in there and found out it's 0 0.6 inches. So this is, this next bit is going to give you a closer representation of the dodecahedron, and um, but it's not going to still be completely accurate. It's more like ninety-seven percent accurate. But anyway, I've devised this, um, you know, kind of based on a cube with uh, four four cubes essentially, or eight cubes, one behind the center. And, you know, doubled up the star in here. So in the fruit of life, traditionally, it's just drawn with the center point of this last circle, making triangles there. Now on the fruit of life, I've gone all the way out to the far edges and have drawn those triangles in there. So I have these two triangles in here, and those are going to give me uh, a little bit more versatility and flexibility to at least draw the icosahedron accurately so here's my drawing of it compared to the one that I just grabbed from Wikipedia, which is accurate, you know, 100% accurate. And, uh, you know, it will fit, you know, over top of the design here. So that's, um, and, and to a high degree of accuracy, I don't believe there's any inaccuracy with this one. So we have got our one inch, um, one inch uh, triangle here. And then now we have that slightly uh, inflated broke, we broke that line, which I was describing, which was a straight across in the original way that many folks have drawn the 
icosahedron, but now we have that slightly bow in here, which is given to us by extending that fruit of life triangle all the way to the back edge of the circle there. So just uh, to show you what I mean by that one more time on the drawing here, that circle here, the back edge of the circle. So that's going to give you two set points of location. And now we just extend our line out to the second, and that's going to give you a, a, a icosahedron. Now the dodecahedron, um, you know, I was pretty excited about this for a while. And in fact, in my book, I have, you know, a number of pages that are built around this thinking that it was 0.618 for a long time just by eyeballing it. But, you know, because I don't want to propagate misinformation in the book, I'm going to go back and correct all this and the things that I built off of that afterwards, because then it means every structure that I've then assigned to this form is also slightly off. Um, but as a closer representation, it is much closer than the original dodecahedron. So what we've done here is we just have the hexagon dotted line of the original, uh, which, which is part of this icosahedron. And where that, you know, bisects the, or not, you know, cuts the line in half here in this little segment, doesn't cut it in half, but it cuts this little segment. That's going to be where you draw your edge here and here and there and there and there. So that's going to be that short edge. And then when you connect that location, those between all those, you're going to get that back edge of the dodecahedron. And of course, it's not 0.618, it's 0.6 along the back edge measurement. The rest of this kind of internal structure does work out and does match up with the icosahedron, but unfortunately it's not going to give us a perfect pentagonal face along there because it's a little off. But in terms of drawing it, you know, and just laying over the perfect example that they gave me on Wikipedia, to the pencil, to the lead in the pencil, and all the little nuances that happen if you're drawing this, it's going to be pretty negligible. And if, uh, if you're going to draw these dodecahedron, I would definitely not draw it if you want it closer to looking like a real dodecahedron. Don't do it out of Fruit of Life Metatron's Cube. I'll do a video on, you know, all the lines that made up this little template that I've made here that will give you a closer version, much closer version to the uh, to Metatron's version, uh, you know, to, to the, de the decahedron. So anyway, um, yeah, pretty close, but still not 100%. Uh, and that's why I say, you know, I don't know if we can do it in the hexagon pattern, because once we change any of these one inch measurements, you know, for this segment uh, in relationship to the icosahedron, then how do we work in the dodecahedron to make it fit? So it's still a, uh, a mystery for me in this hexagon view, at least. I'm going to show you another view that does work completely accurate in just a moment, but I just wanted to kind of conclude this section with, uh, let's uh, zoom in here just a little bit. So, uh, you know, what typically, uh, I, you know, trying to create these forms so that they nest within one another uh, or, or overlap to create a compound, um, this will do it much better than the version of Metatron's cube. For instance, Metatron's cube, just to back up, this little dodecahedron uh, is in no way ever going to become a compound of the incorrect version of the icosahedron over here. So the compound um, is also the dual. So the icosahedron is the dual of the uh, dodecahedron. So the two can fit inside each other. The edges can overlap. And when the edges overlap in the center points where the edges do bisect one another, that will create a form called the rhombic tricontahedron, which um, is another form that has phi in its uh, diamond rhombic faces. So each of these diamond faces are in phi proportion. From this angle, you won't be able to see that. And of course, it's slightly off because our dodecahedron is off. But essentially, this is the rhombic tricontrahedron in this view. And it's comprised of these two forms. So it's got three faces. 
160 uh, vertices. And you know, when we compound these, where these lines cross, I'll get in a little closer on that one to show you. Well, oh, that's not close. 150. There we go. Uh, let's go. Let's go up to 200. So you know, when these are connected, this line of the icosahedron will divide the line of the um, dodecahedron. In, in half here. So it's gonna do it well here. Like I said, these lines work, but it's only when we get out to these back lines where things get a little wonky because of that 0.6 edge in the back. But otherwise, things are looking really good. It's fitting within there. That's what it should look like from that view. And then when you connect the, uh, the, the, the new pieces together, when you draw lines to connect these edges, uh, the vertices of the icosahedron to the dodecahedron here, then you create these rhombic, which are basically another fancy word for diamond, diamond-shaped faces, rhombic faces, and then you'll get the rhombic faces here uh, when we remove the underlying template. Uh, so this is a, you know, important form. This one, you know, is thought to be the grid work that is around the earth, and um, many of the sacred sites fall upon different grid work places, uh, grid work spots on the earth. Um, so it's, it's a highly important form. It's just our original Metatron's cube, Fruit of Life, didn't get us close to it. This gets us closer, but we do have some inaccuracy. Um, here are the, you know, the versions that are 100% accurate that are just taken from the Wikipedia drawings uh, to overlay. And it's, it's you know, much better by, uh, you know, a small margin of error, like 3%. So anyway, um, that's the best I could do with Metatron's cube or, or at least showing some, some issues with that. And then the best I could discover with trying to, you know, change it in a way that would help uh, get it in, you know, to the phi relationship but I wasn't able to successfully pull it off, but got much closer. Um, but this quote, I'm reminded of uh, Buckminster Fuller here. This is a great quote I just read the other day and you know, in years past. Uh, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. So of course the fruit of life and the flower of life and all those things are never gonna be obsolete. They're totally functional and they do great for what it is that they do. Yet it's just not really doing the dodecahedron and the icosahedron. So, you know, I discovered a new model that we can use sacred geometry techniques to, to do um, to draw the dodecahedron uh, and icosahedron although it's not going to be from the hexagonal view. This is going to return back to our square view where the cube, the, the cube is not on its vertice; It's just square facing you directly. And um, I do almost the majority of my drawings from this view. I find that the mathematics that are contained within this pattern of the root creation, just the vesica, and the four circles, or sometimes eight there, give me more than enough to translate those drawings over to a hexagon view. But this, I believe, is the, the root source creation type of pattern, the vesica, working from this point and finding the center point. And of course, that's gonna give you the root five, root three, and root two, and all those immediately, where none of those measurements are well, well, root two is showing up in the other one, but the, most of those measurements are not showing up in the hexagon view. So um, let's just zoom in and I'll walk you through some of these steps to draw the dodecahedron and icosahedron from this another view, which of course, you know, Wikipedia will show you this view but how do they derive it? I'm not sure what techniques they use, but if we're gonna use concentric you know, circles and a straight edge and a compass to draw this, then this is the method that will give you 100% accuracy with all the mathematics being checked out um, by me here to make sure this is all gonna work. So the first thing that we're gonna do, and I'll do a, a, a more detailed drawing one on this because um, you know, I, I think that a lot of my 
work that I'm excited about in sacred geometry is, you know, providing some upgrades to what we've been currently, uh, currently been taught, currently what we've been used to, and just testing those things out and seeing if they're accurate, seeing if they work, and then, you know, building off of that um, and adding new information. So here's a totally new method. I don't believe seen anywhere else before to draw these forms accurately. So we're going to start off and just draw on your basic uh, creation pattern here, which my, some of my other videos do. But now these are the key lines. We're going to start off with phi, uh, you know, 1.618 right away by going from the corner of that square. Of course, we're starting with the two inch circle and one inch circles in here to do this. We're going to draw that line all the way through till it meets up to the edge of the circle here. It looks like it's at the intersection of these two circles. It's not. It's just to the one inch circle here. So it meets at that one inch circle. And we're going to do that here too, from that corner through the midway point, bisecting the line of the uh, square, going over to the edge here and stopping there. So we've only done two of these, but so we've drawn two lines that are based on phi. And then we've got connect this line which is gonna go through the corner edge of the square and that blue line. So we created a fancy looking number four there. Um, so backwards four, I guess. Um, but if I did the other way, it would be uh, a four. So anyway, forget that aside. Um, so we've, uh, we, now we're gonna continue on that process and we're gonna do that same thing all the way around the uh, corners of the square going through the midpoint and ending at the circle all the way around. And the neat thing about this is I believe uh, this star cut diagram here, which is then now at the basis, the root of this pattern is the star cut diagram. All that's been done is we've extended those lines and I haven't done a super lot of teaching on the star cut diagram yet, but it's going to be the, the main pattern, one of the main patterns that I really focus on because um, I think that there's, for, for one, the soul stars within it, it's going to contain these parts, it's going to contain all sorts of music harmonies and uh, intervals, um, different shapes and areas and three, four, five triangles and pyramids and all that sort of stuff. It's all contained in there. I think this is really one of the main uh, forms that's going to be revolutionizing sacred geometry that, that uh, Malcolm Stewart got the ball rolling with, with his Patterns of Eternity and his other geometers kind of for, tune into the field and just start to create like I was and come across this quite naturally uh, from this view. It's really going to upgrade our understanding of sacred geometry and uh, with a new new template to be working with. So We've done that. We created the star cut diagram, a kind of extended star cut diagram. And now that will create these two uh, squares, essentially. I'll show you. Oh, that's the whole thing. Um, we got two squares that are created. And each of those are 1.376 inches in length. You don't have to get caught up in the measurements. I did all the measurements and then some just to see what everything, how it was all working out. Um, but it creates these two squares overlapping here. Now, the beauty of this is where those two squares overlap, where they cross in this point here, when you draw a line, it's gonna be smaller than your vesica shape, because of course that's 1.73 inches, root three, where the vesica goes across, meaning that uh, you know from this line here to here is the one point, seven three measurement of root three. Um, but we're gonna now create the phi relationship by drawing the line from the section intersection of these two squares from here all the way down to here. And that will give us 1.618 from another vantage point. And of course, we have that also across here. So our, our kind of new kind of template design that we're working with here are these two, you know, counter-rotated squares 
and this star cut diagram in the center. So, you know, I'm going to kind of breeze through this fast. Um, there will definitely be a how to draw video because I do believe this is, um, you know, working towards making it, building a new model, you know, and, and augmenting the existing model than I guess making it obsolete, but at least showing a different way of doing it. Um, so here's, here's a new model of doing this because now easily, you know, the dodecahedron is, from this view, going to be drawn in like so. All you have to do is uh, start at that one point, the, the intersection of the two squares, and you're going to, through this intersection of the two squares over here, this is where you'll have to devise a way. I'll show you in the video how to do it. You devise a way to just draw a straight line through there till it meets the opposite edges of these two lines. And that will give you a measurement of, one, of 0.618. And it's bingo, you know, because what we're looking for is a one inch across here and the back edge being 0.618. Now we know we have the phi ratio. And of course, we also have this 0.951, right? This measurement here, uh, 0.951 way back in the earlier section. I don't know if I brought that along with me, but I'll grab it over here. Bring it over here. And paste. So now we've got We've got that length of the dodecahedron of the of the pentagon face. So over here we have this length. So remember, this is a uh, pentagon still, but you're just seeing a flat face of it all the way across. So that length, if this is a true pentagon, meaning that these measurements of these angles, because they're sloping away from you, this is sloping back towards the center point, and this is sloping over to this area over here, that measurement should be consistent with the pentagon because this is a flat face of a pentagon. And yes, it is, it's 0 0.951. 0 0.951 is what we're looking for. So we do have all the faces of this form being a perfect, uh, dodecahedron from this view. Of course, like I said, in Wikipedia, they show you this view, but if you're a sacred geometer and you're using a compass and a straight edge uh, and you want to draw a dodecahedron that's accurate, and there's many, many phi relationships, these lines being divided on the outside here are almost all entirely within the phi relationship, if not um, entirely. I have to double check every line, but I'm pretty sure majority of them are being intersected at the golden ratio. The only other line uh, that you need to focus on is this dotted blue line here. And that, because you have to find this edge to divide this line, you know, to get the 0.618. And it's, it's easy to do because from the corner of the square, you just take this line and extend it all the way up to the 0.618 area. And that will give you 0.618 across here. So we've just created a beautiful structure. In fact, with that dotted line, if you just start connecting the dots all the way through these drawing lines, I don't even have to change the line angle here. It's just a straight line from here to there. It's gonna create the star pattern. And essentially these are all cubes uh, at different angles within here. It's a five cube structure on the inside of this dodecahedron. There's five cubes. They're just looking at this one, but there's another one that's connected with these edges over here and et cetera. So, you know, we've got the stars now inside that pattern. So, you know, excellent, beautiful example of the mathematics working out with the geometry. Um, now, how about the icosahedron? Well, the icosahedron also is going to be really simple for us to do. All we're going to need to do is go up to the top of our, you know, 1.618 where those two squares cross, we plan our compass there, and we're going to do a one inch circle. You know, and we already have our compass probably set to the one inch, so we just draw the circle 
draw another circle. And now that is going to give us, you know, we're going we're to do a little more than that. But if we draw a straight line up from here and we draw another line across where those meet, et cetera, you know, there's a couple other little steps. But anyway, that gives you the, the cross section to give you the point where you're going to start your line to connect all the edges to make the, uh, I, the icosahedron. So that's going to have an edge length of one inch along this edge, edge length of one inch along this edge, and the whole thing is going to be 1.618, 1.618. So phi is intimately connected to the icosahedron. Of course, these are not typically the views that we're used to, uh, you know, looking at these at because we're so, uh, I don't know, I even guess I want to say conditioned, uh, you know, conditioned to see a majority of these forms from the flower of life, fruit of life design. Hopefully now you could see that that is incorrect from there. Even the correction one that I did is, a little, is more close to accurate, yet still not really showing phi relationships because of that back edge of being 0.6. So when we're dealing with sacred geometry and sacred mathematics, and we want these to be universal, uh, you know, across the universe and across wherever time and space we may happen to be, then we want to have things actually be uh, true. And we don't want to continue to propagate you know, misinformation that all five platonic solids are contained within the uh, fruit of life pattern. And, you know, uh, maybe we need to adapt our, uh, our images to something that's a little more uh, accurate and start to meditate and ponder some of these and connect to the mathematics associated with the form rather than just take the the drawing at face value because someone says it's a dodecahedron. Um, so here we go. We can do the same thing with the compound of the icosahedron and the decahedron. Now we're going to unite these two together where these crossbars will connect, connect across the top. And just like I did before, we're showing you we can create the rhombic diamond faces all the way around and remove that. Uh, underlying forms of the Akasa and the Deca. And now we've got, you know, the rhombic tricontahedron. And to test that out, each of those rhombic faces, at least the one that is flat to you, because of course these are curved away from you, but the one that's dead in the center is going to give you one inch length to 0.618 width. And that's a phi relationship. And that's what the rhombic tricontahedron should have. So here we go, you know, last slide to ponder and take a look at. Here is how I devised my version of Metatron's cube, the upgraded one, which is great for tetrahedrons, octahedrons, cubes, and even is pretty good for drawing a much more accurate icosahedron. Uh, the icosahedron is totally accurate in this, and the dodecahedron much more improved. Um, you know, so we draw all these circles to create that, and yes, we get this. It's it's not 100% accurate, but it's much closer. Or this kind of root. I don't want to say or and. You know, because these things are in relationship to one another. They're just selling us different things. Yet this one here on the left is going to actually provide all the harmonic uh, ratios of the phi nested in here, and even these outer squares where they divide each other is in phi portions. So I, I think that this one for me at least is bringing me further into my discovery and understanding of geometry built off of this simple pattern of, you know, how many circles here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven circles. And you get all this by connecting these lines and instantly the decahedron, icosahedron, squares, cubes, and all the other nested platonic solids, which I forgot to show how they're, they're nested within this. Um, but everything is in this, this design here. Uh, and including additional forms of the Archimedean solids, et cetera. Uh, so anyway, that, that's a kind of 
quick uh, overview and hopefully you found that uh, interesting. And, you know, now after watching that, you know, don't take anything I take at face value. If, if you're not familiar with the mathematics, hopefully that gave you enough of an introduction. But really, with test everything out from another book, other sources, look into it, start to make your own discoveries, test out what I'm saying. Um, this is what helps you become engaged with the material. It's contemplative and you uh, integrate it and you make it your own and understand it more fully. But hopefully by the end of this, you do, um, you know, get, get the sense that the fruit of life uh, as it's been shown in the past does not contain those platonic solids as said. So if you hear that, if you come across it, then, you know, maybe it's time to start letting people know that there's other methods to actually do that and that that's not accurate. So anyway, I hope you appreciate it and enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it and enjoyed sharing this with you. I take all this excerpts from my book that I've been working on. So a lot of this material, all of this material will be in there. As I said, I got to go back and now do some corrections um, because I was almost going to add in some more misinformation about some of these forms. But hopefully this, uh, you know, if you find yourself anywhere else in the universe, some of these principles will help you while you get there. All right. Talk to you later. Have a great day. Much love.